Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I've always been in search of freedom, quality of life. And I first thought it was all about financial freedom, but there's also time, location, and health freedom involved in it. And so in that light, I've been always fascinated with entrepreneurs, people on the cutting edge, making an impact, the Steve Jobs of the world. And so today I'm happy to interview Miriam Gunn, and she's going to talk to us all about how to stand out in a crowded room, business or life, quality of life, and um, a lot of, I'm really excited about this conversation. So Miriam, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. It's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we had connected through Podmatch, and so tell everybody about how you got your origin story. I've always been curious in how you came to be. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I was actually just texting with someone right before the interview of this, like getting what is it that you do into a pithy statement, you know? And I and he said, "What what is your superpower? And I said, my superpower is asking questions like provocative questions that kind of is where they know what their next move needs to be. And I've done that my whole life. I've always been super curious. And so when you would see me in high school or in the university settings, I was asking people those kind of questions about the people they were dating. When I first started my initial job, which involved mentoring students, there were just tons of those kind of questions. Um, and then I became a therapist because as I asked those questions, I think people realized they needed to make changes. And I was referring them to therapists constantly and I was taking them and I thought, why don't I just get this degree? And then at one point I was a recipient of honestly some powerful coaching. It changed trajectory of my business. Uh, my income began to increase and double and whatever. And I went, I got to learn how to do that. So I got some training and coaching. And then I would say, I realized that I love working with entrepreneurs, primarily heart centered entrepreneurs. Like I love helping people make money, but I really want to help people make money so that they can do good in the world. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, I love that. And um, it's all about making impact significance, but it's also leaving the world in a better place. And, um, you know, I was talking with another guest talking about, you know, we get so caught up in this, um, this measurement of income and net worth and status and what you can buy. And, you know, it's all predicated by the mainstream media trying to, you know, keep the economy going. So um, how do you, you talk about how to stand out in a crowded room in business or life? How do you balance those two? A part of that, I think, is being self-aware enough to understand when you're out of balance. In business, so many times entrepreneurs are usually really passionate and they put everything into things and their life starts to sound like their communication back to their partner or their kids starts to sound like things like, um, oh, it's just a really busy time. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, this is a really busy week. And, you know, it's like these Yes, it is. But it also was a busy week last week and the week before and the last 52 weeks. And I know somebody who once left a note on the kitchen counter that said, you need to decide if you would like to be married or not. I've gone to my you know, mom's house. I'm going to be there for two weeks. And you spend some time thinking about whether or not you want to be married. That is not the kind of note you want to come home to for sure. So this balance being self-aware enough to know how do your actions impact the people around you? That mm. would be, I would say, the first part. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And uh, it's interesting, like especially as we um, as we have built careers, businesses, we have family, spouses, relationships. It's it's amazing. I the more I think about it, like every single decision has a bigger impact because now you're talking, you know, has a bigger scale and. Uh, you know, when, when I was 20, I, you know, I could basically, you know, kind of, but uh, now it's, you have to be, be aware of, you know, what impact your actions have on others. We talk about, um, you talk about self-sabotage a lot, and um, it's very common in entrepreneurs 
and uh, what what is contributes to self sabotage people's mm-hmm. lack of success? I really think that some of this now of course i i have a therapy background so of course i'm going to go back to childhood and the family of origin but a lot of times it's ideas that people have ideas that limit them um ideas that you know maybe they know the right thing to do but they don't do it usually if you talk with an entrepreneur they're not and you wonder why what's getting in the way often it's themselves it's these ideas of Well, when I was, for example, one entrepreneur that I work with, he was raised in a family where it was all about work and it was never about play. And he has all these issues in his relationship because all he does is work. I'm going to work this weekend and his wife doesn't believe him. And another one I was talking to, excuse me, just earlier today, they're not super passionate why are you not super passionate? Well, it turns out that when they were growing up, their parents like squished any emotional outburst. As long as they were even, it was fine. But if they were too happy and boisterous, it was settle down. And if they were sad or whatever, it's like, things aren't that bad. Just, you know, just turn, you know, why are you making so much noise? Like anger, none of that. And so it doesn't, surprise me that this person has a hard time being passionate about their various projects they're in them they're doing them they're faithful but they don't have that like punch and it's because that space in their brain was trained to be something else and now their work has to be learning how to untrain that space building new neural networks about passion oh that's interesting because we'll talk about you talk about the amygdala a little bit later, but um, we talk about un basically untraining what you've been trained, and then when people get stuck in life, business, their families, what are some ideas to help them get unstuck? Yeah, well, I mean, if you have, I, I, I mean, I'm just gonna do a shameless plug for coaching. I think a a good question stirs that space, and you have an insight that changes you. Sometimes, I mean, I have seen people have changes with hypnotherapy you know they get into a space where they can access the unconscious and shift that space a therapeutic technique called emdr allows you to access really create more communication between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex i think that's a way sometimes it is a matter utilizing habits that the person you would want to be would utilize so if I want to be a super organized person who is really uh, championing my physical health, but I'm not that kind of person, let's say, I would have to put my mindset into that kind of a person. What would a healthy person do? They would drink more water, they would move, they would exercise, they would eat less sugar. You know, let's list out or talk to or interview some healthy people you know. How do you live your life? And then emulate those habits and over time those habits become yours and then you shift those things so those are some ideas hmm. yeah interesting um and um i'm not advocating this but um it's interesting how you can alter your consciousness either through through traditional non-traditional methods um this hypnotherapy i know a lot of um people are uh, again this is not a advice but you know a little bit psychedelics these types of things uh, people are using to get more creative to you know get into a different state of consciousness and operate but um it's quite interesting and then you talk about this uh the amygdala but you know this uh fear center and how do you get your you know we we live in this era of crisis news network and um what's interesting is i heard one entrepreneur he's he's like i i trained my neural net accomplish what i wanted to do so how do you get your amygdala to stand down and let you live your life are you asking me personally or how Um, do i help other people do that or just me personally in some technique well i would say for me personally there was a period of time where i spent a lot of time with the headspace app and i just did a lot of their like i'm going to go with the word micro meditations and i just spent some time teaching teaching my brain how to just maybe observe 
instead of be in the flow of the crisis or whatever, how to stand outside and observe, ah, oh, this is Miriam freaking out about X, you know, instead of being right in it and freaking out about X. That was super helpful to me. Another thing that I have done that I think has been useful with the whole amygdala space, maybe understanding. Sometimes I will treat my amygdala as though it's separate from the rest of my brain. And I had had some medical issues in the past that have left me with some medical post-traumatic stress. And I'm sure as an MD, you've seen things that probably stress people out a lot in medicine, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the other day I had to go do a medical test that probably was no big deal, but it was reminiscent of that other time in my life. And I just kind of talked to that part of me and said, it's okay if you're afraid, it's not a big deal. We're going to get you through this. And I almost let my brain separate into two parts. And one was a little more parental in a good way, like a good parent. And the other, my amygdala space was much more childlike. And I just let the one talk to the other. And, you know, of course, there's tons of literature out there on deep breathing or doing some things to get yourself in your body. You know, I was in a coaching session a while ago. I was observing and the person came in and they were talking kind of like this and they were super like really animated and whatever and and the guy said hang on a second give me 20 push-ups right now and the guy was like are you serious yes and so he did he did 20 push-ups right now and then he came back this was all on zoom and the guy said how you doing he goes i feel more centered you know so sometimes there are these little tricks that you can do that just help you shift that spot Definitely getting in your body is one. The push-ups make a, you know, they really work for people. Mm -hmm. I'm not a push-up person myself, but for some people it really works. Yeah. It's interesting how you can use these, um, um, you know, kind of deal with your past and your um, where you are in the present. Um, really a good piece of advice is getting present and getting centered, you know, either getting through your body or, you know, intense, like just like a cold shower or just like, you know, something that really for sure. maps you out. Um, and then yes. you can actually use these techniques to move forward, like establish new goals and ideas, you know, work navigating conflict um, to progress. Speak to a little bit about how you can use these to, to move forward and um, as opposed to, you know, maintaining the present and dealing with the past. Yeah, I think that um one thing that has been remarkably helpful for most people is understanding that not every thought you have is you so being able to separate out and say oh i'm having a thought about my taxes or oh i'm having a thought about or even to separate yourself into parts language a piece of me really wants to work toward this next level and another piece of me wants to sit on the couch and watch netflix you know, when you, when you pull yourself out of this is me, I am X, I am a slob, or I am a go-getter, or I am whatever, when you can kind of separate it out and say this thought is like this, it allows you more choices. And so, you know, trying to move into the next phase of whatever your next level is, getting clarity about where do I want to go finding other people who do similar things that I can almost like either model after, or sometimes if they're your friends, you can draft off of them almost like a bike in a Peloton, you know? Those are some ways that you can sort of set your trajectory for someplace different than you are. It's, it's an interesting game, this forward movement into your next level. And if you treat it more like a game and know that you're gonna lose some rounds and you're gonna win some rounds, loosens that death grip that you can have that's like, oh my gosh, I'm failing if I don't accomplish X. You know, that the negative self-talk that happens in your head. I find that when people can kind of game it and they compare the you of today to the you of yesterday, instead of me comparing myself to you, I can compare myself to the me of yesterday and have I moved forward in those goals? Am I further today than I was yesterday? And the answer is yes. Well, then I'm succeeding. Maybe I'm not succeeding at the rate I want. Okay, now how do we address that? But do you see the perspective difference in that space? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. 
Yeah, because it's uh, it's interesting because uh, for example, you know, traveling or because I fly a lot, and you know, this whole travel day can induce a lot of stress. You know, like delays and cancel, you know, all this, and um, so I just kind of it's interesting if you make it a game. Like, what can you? How can you do this? Or you take a little bit of perspective. You know, it's like. Um, you know, people freak out, you know, oh, I'm an hour delayed, but if I actually step back and just kind of um, get some perspective, it's been really helpful. That um, makes sense. Whenever I fly, I always, I focus on that moment when you take off, because I remember in high school, the only thing I remember about flight and whatever, the Bernoulli principle of the air going over and under the wings that creates the lift. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a miracle. It's a miracle that I live in this day and age where I can instead of like, like if it was, you know, 200 years ago, I couldn't cross this country without taking a year of my life and people didn't do it. They just moved away and that was it. Yeah. And I can get in a plane. And so then it gives me more patience with the delays, because even if I'm delayed six hours, I'm still getting there a thousand times faster than I would have 200 years ago. And how come I got privileged to live in this day and age versus back then, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. But, uh, how, very interesting how I know because um, this whole mindfulness mindset um, is a lot of people are interested. How can people follow you on social media, contact you, reach out to you? Love it. So my company's name is Leave Better. Like I want you to leave better. Um, and so at Leave Better on Instagram, Miriam is my email address. Leavebetter.com is my um, website. Just reach out to me. And uh, for all the listeners out there, let's thank Miriam for dropping a lot of alpha and experience and knowledge. Um, be sure to reach out to her on LinkedIn and Instagram. And uh, all of her resources mentioned will be in the links in the show notes. So Thanks so much, and thanks for coming on to the podcast. Uh, thank you, Chris. This was really fun.